Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Y'all, weren't these just awesome? Stay tuned. In a previous video, we made this upscale designer box just using plain old cardstock and one rub on. And you saw how easy it was to take something as simple as paper and a rub on and make it look like it came straight out of a boutique. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you guys so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. I'll never be able to say it enough, but I really do appreciate it. I'll have the video for these boxes linked in the description box below, but not only were they super easy to make, but y'all, they are very economical. This is paper crafting at its finest and at its most inexpensive. So today we're going to take this concept one step further and we are going to make this beautiful designer bag. It is perfect for our box. So we can take our box, place it in the bag, you can give it just as this, or you can dress the bag up a little bit more. Totally up to you. I'm going to give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So here is a closer look at that awesome designer bag. When finished, it is nine and a quarter inches tall, seven and a half inches wide, two and a half inches deep. So it is perfect for the box that we made in the previous video. It's perfect for other items that you might want to put in yours as well. Y'all, it is so easy to get this look, and I am going to show you how right now. So on this project, I'll be using my two inch oval punch, some glue, and my finger blade, as well as my big old spatula. Then I have my scoreboard. I have two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight cardstock. I have one piece of black cardstock, and this measures six and three quarters by nine and a quarter. Then I have the blue for the top, that measures eight and three quarters by six and a quarter. So very easy to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and score our bag. So on three sides of the bag, you are going to score at two and a half. On three sides only, score at two and a half. Bring in that second piece, and on three sides, we score at two and a half. Then I can bring in my big old spatula, and we can go ahead and fold and burnish those scores. Then on one of the 12 by 12 inch pieces, we are going to remove the corner pieces all together. So I'll go up to the score mark and I'll cut down and I'll remove like this. So we have removed that piece. Then on the second piece, we're not going to remove these pieces. We're simply going to cut in this direction. So in both directions, on both sides, we're going to cut in that direction. So let's just go ahead and make our cut. Then I'll angle and angle. We'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to cut straight out by cutting through the middle of the score mark. And then I'll angle angle and I am going to go ahead and just reduce this a little bit in size. So now you'll have your two pieces and the bottoms will look like this. I am going to take this piece that I did cut out the bottoms completely and I am going to reduce this side panel and I'm reducing it to about one inch. You don't have to reduce yours if you don't want to. I just like how it removes some of the bulk when I am pinching in on the side, it just makes it easier 
for the bag sides to pinch in. But if you want to leave yours, you certainly can. So now that we have these two pieces like this, I am just going to stack them and use my paper punch, which is a two inch oval. Please make sure you're checking the links in the description box for my Amazon storefront. I am now going to just flip this over and punch. And with this punch, I am able to punch through two pieces of stacked cardstock, medium weight. So now I want to do the same thing with these pieces. I'll use my tape runner and I'm just going to add some tape. To my piece and you'll get a good feel for what I'm doing in just a minute so I could use um, my wide tape or tear tape but using the tape runner works for this so I am just going to take this piece and we're going to place it down like this Now I'll flip it over and just line up my punch and we'll punch out that black piece. Easy peasy. And now we're going to take this piece and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just place some tape on it. and we'll punch through it as well. This is just an easy way for me to make sure that I have my punch holes aligned on this project. So I'm just going to take this piece and we're going to put it down like this. Then I'll use my punch again and I'm just going to punch out. So now that we have our holes punched, we can go ahead and place down our sweet little rub-on. I noticed that I didn't get the first one too, too straight. i try to do a little bit better with this one. But even if I don't get it straight, straight, it'll be okay. So now that we have that down, I'm just going to go ahead and use my big old spatula to get that rub on started. And so we just rub. And you'll notice when it's starting to stick to the paper because it'll look a little bit milky in color. And so you'll know that you're getting a stick. Then I'm going to take my finger blade and just start peeling slowly. And if I notice that any is not stuck to the paper, I'll just use my fingernail to go back over that. And I think we have it. And so there we have it. I can see right here where I went a little bit off on putting that down, but y'all that's okay. Those are the things that I really don't stress over. I like using glue when I'm putting a box together. If you want, you can use whatever you have available to you, whether that's a glue stick or tape or glue. But I like using glue because it's so permanent and it hardens very well. And it gives me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm trying to place it down. So all I'm going to do is place it down so that I'm putting it down and it meets the score mark right there. Then I'm just going to flip it over because I want to make sure that I have these score marks aligned. And I can see that they are. 
So now we can just get that stuff. And so now we're just going to take some glue, place some glue on this piece, and then we place glue on the piece that we shortened in size. Then we're going to take this piece and put it on the inside like that. Then we can take this piece and basically what you want to do is make sure you're matching starting at the top. You definitely want the top to match because if it's not matched at the top, you'll notice it. But if it's not matched at the bottom, we can fix that. But if you leave it unmatched at the top, then that's one of those things that you're definitely going to notice. So I'm going to go on the inside and get a really good stick on this. And there's my side. We'll do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to take my glue, place some glue on this piece. Then I'll place some glue right here. Then we can take the wider flap and fold it over on top, making sure that we have it nice and even at the top. And let's just go ahead and bring it down. And now I can go in and get it nice and stuck. And y'all, that's how easy it is to make a bag to complement the box that you made. So if you want to pinch in those sides, I am just going to take the top, push in in the middle, and pinch. And you can take that pinch as far down as you want. And there is our beautiful, beautiful designer bag to go with our designer box. This is the perfect presentation for a gift that you might want to give. And y'all literally, literally it cost pennies because I took this cardstock from a cardstock paper pad that I had and I think I paid $5.99 for that pad. There were 48 sheets in there, so pennies to make the bag. And I used one part of a Dollar Tree rub-on and this piece here, based on all the pieces that were there, I probably paid about 15 cents to put this on. So this is some extremely economical paper crafting, but it doesn't look like it. This looks better than anything that you would go in the store and find. And then it becomes even more special because you made it. So I'm going to bring the two bags back out so that you can see just how gorgeous, gorgeous these are and you just saw how easy it was to make them. So I hope that this has gotten your creative juices flowing and you can think of all types of wonderful ways that you can use bags like these and you can make bags like these to fit whatever need you have. If you have enjoyed this video, and y'all, I certainly hope that you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.